Are we in a revolutionary moment now? Rick Perlstein is with us. His uh, Twitter is Rick Perlstein, P-E-R-L-S-T-E-I-N. And uh, historian, journalist, author of Nixon Land, The Rise of a President and the Fracturing of America. Rick, welcome to the program. Tom, it's always great to be with you. Thank you. You were quoted by uh, Daniel Nassau uh, for the BBC in their news magazine as uh, talking about learned helplessness, helplessness in, in America. This is a concept that, that uh, Marty Seligman uh, came up with years ago and popularized that, you know, when they shocked these dogs and, and they didn't have the ability to run away from the shock, over a period of time they stopped trying to run away, even when they were no longer restrained, that they learned how to be helpless. Do you really think that the American people have learned helplessness the way that Marty Seligman's dogs did? Well, let's hope not. You know, let's hope that we still have a little fight in, le- in us left. But, you know, I think some of the symptoms are there. I mean, it's very hard, and this is in a way a rational response, for us to believe that uh, what we do politically has much response uh, among the people who govern us. And I'll just, you know, give an, as an example uh, the whole idea of the super committee, which, you know, in addition to being a kind of dastardly way of guaranteeing that we cut programs that the American people actually need, uh, the whole idea of it, the whole idea of having this bipartisan commission that says, you know, well, these are the rules, and our hands are tied, basically removes uh, from any kind of popular accountability any congressman. Right. You can and say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm just doing, you know, what I have to do, and it doesn't matter if a million people show up uh, at their doorstep, uh, I can't do anything about it. Right. And at least, well, it, it'll be subject to an up or down vote, no filibuster, and at least one member of that, the Gang of 12, is actually retiring. Um, so yeah. it's genuinely non-responsive, or actually might be responsive to their next employer, which is probably going to be a lobbying shop. Um, right. The let me play for you a clip of Barack Obama five days before the election of two thousand eight, oh, and uh, this yeah. is yeah, this is about uh, twenty five thirty seconds. It's a mashup, but it's all from one speech in uh, Missouri. Here he is. We are five days away. From- Fundamentally transforming the United States of America. In five days, you can turn the page on policies that put greed and irresponsibility on Wall Street before the hard work and sacrifice of folks on Main Street. In five days, you can choose policies that invest in our middle class and create new jobs and grow this economy so that everyone has a chance to succeed. Folks who can't pay their medical bills or send their kids to college or you not being able to afford college or thinking about that 30 or 40 or $50,000 worth of debt that you might have to carry. People who, who can't save for retirement. You know, ordinary Americans, we can't take a back seat to CEOs and Wall Street banks for four more years. But remember, we faced difficult times before. The American story has never been about things coming easy. It's been about rising to the moment when times are tough. Some of you may be cynical and fed up with politics, and you have every right to be. But despite all of this, I ask of you what's been asked of Americans throughout our history. If you'll stand with me and fight by my side and cast your ballot for me, I promise you this, we will not just win Missouri, we will win this general election. And together, we will change this country and we will change the world. Now, twice in that, Rick, he said, we will change this country. And the second time he said, and we will change the world. That was a call to revolution. Well, Tom, you know, (laughs) when you hear Barack Obama dropping his G's, Mm -hmm. reach for your wallet (laughs) yeah well Uh, no i'm not quite that cynical i you know i clearly clearly he surrounded himself with people who were anti-revolutionaries he surrounded himself with with the the old clinton crowd who who may have been revolutionaries in their day and may have tried but by this time and this point in time they aren't and 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 he became the establishment and the question i guess in my mind because it is so clear to me that when Americans voted for FDR, they were voting for revolution. In fact, you had the Bonus Army just nine months before then. You know, Doug MacArthur driving, you know, through with eight tanks and horseback, whipping and right. shooting people on the on the White House lawn all the way down to the Potomac. Um, right. That in '32 people were calling for revolution. In 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 '68 people or '64 rather pe- people. Well, actually, throughout the '60s people were calling for revolution. But the, you know, the big revolutions of the, of the of the Great Society. The in 1980. 
Uh, yeah. th there was a pot, uh, uh, enough of America that was calling for revolution, and I think that they were calling for revolution against high interest rates and a stagnant, stagnant economy and, and, and a seemingly impotent president. Um, that r the Reagan revolution was real. I mean, he didn't he yeah. didn't say to the to the Patco people, maybe I'll compromise with you. Okay, uh, you know, please yeah. come back to work. He said, "You guys are fired. You're out on your butts." Right. And and every right. single one of these revolutionary presidents, and I can take you back, you know, through through Lincoln and and uh, Andrew Jackson, you know, with uh, his revolution against the banks and and Jefferson's revolution of 1800. I would submit to you, every single one of those was an American yeah. revolution as significant as the revolution of 1776, except they happened in the ballot boxes. And the you question know, is, will America have another revolution? Well, you know, I think the PACO, the the 1981, you know, firing the air traffic controllers and Reagan is. An interesting example, uh, because what we have here is a Reagan, a president promising on the campaign trail transformative change, and whether you know you or I like it or not, you know delivering transformative change. What we saw in that Barack Obama speech is very interesting because we've been talking in psychological terms, learned helplessness. There's nothing more uh, kind of denuding of kind of the energy that people have, you know, kind of between their ears, the kind of dynamism uh, to get up in the morning and fight then um, the idea that they're going to give a politician a chance after deciding that politicians uh, are not worth giving a chance. And that's what happened to so many of us on the campaign trail, especially young people. And to have invested that energy and that hope and that trust in a politician, and then um, to, have, uh, to have that kind of cut off at the knees, is very sapping of your will. And uh, so the question is whether, you know, we're going to be able to muster the popular energy to make big changes and go out in the streets and get done what we need to get done. I'm a little cynical about it because uh, already we have millions and millions of people who've taken the risk, taken the dare that they didn't think that they would be taking with Barack Obama and finding themselves systematically uh, disappointed. So I'm a little cynical about that. But look. History can turn on a very, very narrow hinge. Well, I've always said politicians are the people who notice a parade going down the street, yeah, and if and it's big enough, they jump yeah. out in front and with a flag and say, this is my parade. Is yeah, it no possible one, no that, one, yeah. that he'll become that revolutionary again, only this time he'll deliver? Yeah, I mean, no one saw the New Deal coming. No one saw the Russian Revolution coming. You know, no one saw the Civil War coming. You know, they thought that there would be a deal reached for that. Yep. So, you know, anything could be coming around the corner. And, you know, once again, as always, Tom, and you know this better than anyone, it's up to us. It's up to your listeners. It's not up to the president. He didn't say, you know, uh, yes, he can. He said, yes, we can. Yeah. And so we have to shift from circular firing squad mode to win behind the back, not in an, in an absolutely unquestioning way, but really, really be out there and putting the pressure on. So to say, yes, we want real change this time. Thank he's you very changing. much. Pardon? Um, he's, he's been changing the past few weeks because of us. I believe you're right. I absolutely do. I absolutely believe you're right. Rick Perlstein, uh, at Rick Perlstein, his Twitter account. Rick, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks, brother.